G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Melbourne Football Club. Uh, if you're unaware, I've been doing a series where I'm working through all the clubs alpha, reverse alphabetically and I'm doing a separate video and I'm analysing their best 22, their, their off season, a little discussion about how 2023 went and then a, a potential preview into 2024 as well. So if you're unaware, uh, I have a playlist going, I think it's called Team Based Videos for 2024 and uh, you can find all the content in there and uh, you can also find it by subscribing to the channel. I mean, technically you don't need to, but I would really appreciate it. But I have done the Western Bulldogs, West Coast, Sydney, St Kilda, Richmond, uh... Port Adelaide, North Melbourne, and now today we are doing the Melbourne Football Club. So Melbourne is an interesting team to analyze uh, from a, like a list demographics point of view uh, because they've been a, a really good team for a number of years now. Obviously, been amazing in 2021. Like I was blown away by that performance in 2021. Since then, they haven't been able to hit those quite those same heights. You know, throughout the home and away season, we've seen them sort of dip at times and constantly just be a little bit of a fraction less good than the other teams, uh, uh, particularly in September, where we've seen back-to-back -back straight sets exit. So a little bit of a failure to deliver on potential, you'd have to say, when, when the potential of this team, this best 22, is absolutely enormous, I would say. But from at least demographics point of view, you know, uh, in 2019, they kind of had that that weird dip uh, where they finished third last. They got pick three, they got Luke Jackson, uh, Trent Rivers, Cosy Pocket Pickett that year. Cozy pocket. Then they've had their period of success and then Luke Jackson requests a trade. So they're still getting access to top talent, which means that they've been able to rejuvenate their list um, with some pretty good picks in the last few years. And, and most importantly as well, cycle some of that talent uh, and even later picks into the side and create roles for them as well. So while there is an aging list, an aging core, and when I say aging, I don't mean they're actually veterans yet or anything like that, other than say Max Gorn, but naturally they've got a, a core part of the team in their prime, uh, but they've been able to support that with some pretty good drafting, I would say, which we'll get into. 2023 was a frustrating year, certainly in the way that it ended. You felt at, at times Melbourne was still in that top glut of teams competing for a flag and then by week two of the finals they were out of it so um, you know positives from it are like Jake Lever and Stephen May were fantastic again down back as we've become so accustomed to Christian Petrarca also had a fantastic year there was a bit of adversity with Clayton Oliver's injury I feel like Melbourne have been pretty healthy over the years that they've been really contending uh, certainly they were in 2021 uh, so this this blow of Clayton Oliver uh, missing a lot of football was it was a very unfortunate one that's that's for sure uh, but they did unearth some good talent you know Judd McVie in particular I included him in my Young Guns video the other day. Uh, Trent Rivers considered, uh, continued his development as a really good halfback flanker. Could there be a bit more midfield time for him in the future? Jake Bowie's another one who contributed this year. In terms of what went wrong from a like a positional sense, obviously the, the Ruck experiment with Grundy didn't, didn't work out. I've obviously covered that a lot on this channel. Um, they've offloaded him after one year. Bring in Tom Fullerton, um, perhaps as like a younger depth option, but probably already more suited to that forward ruck role as well. But from a from a game style execution point of view, their mid forward connection still has plagued them. And it did plague them a little bit in their premiership year. They rectified it for finals, uh, but it still has been a little bit of an issue. In particular as well, their goal kicking. I think in the finals, they went 16 goals, 28 across those two games. And there was a few of those where they were complete misses as well. So we'll get into their best 22 shortly. I'll cover off the players that left the club this off season. Obviously, Brody Grundy was one of them. James Harms left. Uh, James Jordan also left through free agency to Sydney. Michael Hibbard retired. Uh, Luke Dunstan retired as well, a player that they recruited as midfield depth a few years ago. And then a couple of uh, other players, lesser known in Deacon Smith and Kai Turner. In terms of players they brought in, they were fairly active in getting some consolidated depth and maybe at least one best 22 player out of those. And that's Shane McAdam as a small forward from Adelaide. Jack Billings, it's unclear to what extent he's going to feature for Melbourne, uh, certainly early in the season. Well, we don't know yet. And Tom Fullerton that I just talked about. Then they also had two dr high draft picks. They interestingly went for the uh, approach of trying to just condense the, the good picks that they had into the two best possible picks. They tried to go for Harley Reid, obviously. They walk away from the draft with Caleb Windsor and Colton Tholstrup. So uh, two players that I think could actually feature as early as next year. And then Keenan Brown or Kynan Brown, their father's son got added as a rookie uh, in the rookie draft as well. So I'm having a crack at their best 22 now. And uh, comparatively, you know, some best 22 teams have been really tough to construct. I found this one a little bit easier, but that doesn't mean Melbourne fans won't disagree with me and that that's okay. But this was more of an exercise to plot, you know, strengths and weaknesses. So um, I've gone with a three tall backline there 
of Lever, May, and Tomlinson with the mediums in Rivers, Salem, and Judd McVie. I think there's really nice balance to that. Tomlinson had previously explored a move away from the footy club, has told he's a required player. And I think that might telegraph a move of Harrison Petty into the forward line. We saw with the, that happened with a bit of success. So I haven't picked, you know, Ben Brown or Tom McDonald in this team. I've gone Harrison Petty because I think I think that might be how they start the season in conjunction with Jacob Van Royen as the centre-half forward there. I did gloss over the midfield there. I mean, the midfield kind of speaks for itself. It's an absolute strength of this, te- uh, of this team and probably one of the strongest midfields of the competition, boasting Christian Matraka, Oliver and Viney. Um, it's, it's unreal. Brayshaw and Langdon probably make the wings. I put Lucky Hunter on the bench. I feel like Hunter and Langdon could be vulnerable this year if their younger guns start developing, including Caleb Windsor, who I think, I feel like they might have earmarked him to play next year. So I've kind of cheekily chucked him in as the sub. He's kind of going to be a good impact sub uh, once he build, develops a bit of composure and confidence at the next level. But he's, he's a great kick inside 50, and I feel like that will appeal to Melbourne in the short short term. I didn't have any room for Colton Tholstra. He's pretty ready-made. But, uh, you know, out of the forwards that I've picked there, Neil Bullen, uh, Tom Sparrow plays on a flank. I couldn't quite fit him in, uh, but that's fine. That doesn't mean he won't be there, um, you know, towards the end of the year. Jake Melksham also got re rookied I've kept him in this team, but again, you know, with his body, does he play a whole season? I'm not too sure. But relatively speaking, I think that's a fairly stable best 22, although I'm sure there's going to be some disagreements with who I've left out. So for instance, Jack Billings, I don't see an avenue for him into the team for round one, barring injury, but we do know that best 22s are idealistic and uh, naturally, like, there's going to be some injuries anyway. So we, we don't know if we're going to see Billings, but I don't have him in the absolute best 22. I did have McAdam coming in, and he forces out Charlie Spargo. And like I said, I left out Ben Brown, Tom McDonald. I don't think they're going to be in the frame for round one. We'll see what happens with the Petty experiment. Obviously, they had some success with that last year. Kicked a bag of six, uh, I think, against Richmond. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But it could be Petty goes back, Tomlinson goes out and they find another avenue uh, in terms of a key forward. But Jacob Van Royen as well, uh, obviously a young gun forward of the competition. Uh, he's going to be one to watch for sure next year. The introduction of McAdam also kind of gives Cozzy a bit of a partner in crime in terms of small forwards, um, which, you know, it's already a dangerous forward line with Bailey Fritch, probably the best lead up medium forward of the competition of, of his specific type. I think he's an absolute star that his record speaks for itself. But now there's a really dangerous mix there. But Melbourne's issue, you know, as much of the key forward thing has been a, a bit of a problem. We've seen other clubs not have the same hurdle as Melbourne do when it comes to scoring goals with, you know, comparative talent in their forward line. So there's some sort of connection breakdown between the mids and the forwards. And, you know, I'm not really qualified enough to, to really analyze it further than that, but I think that's quite clear. I did pick a single ruck in this team. Maybe Tomlinson and Van Royen could be backup rucks. I'm not too sure, uh, but they do have Tom Fullerton as depth as a potential second genuine ruck forward. But on that midfield connection, that is why I like Windsor. I think he uses the ball inside 50 really well. And I feel like Melbourne took a liking to him uh, for that reason, because it wasn't so clear that Caleb Windsor was the next best available talent. I think Melbourne just identified players that would work well in their system. So I think I think that's going to be an interesting battle this year. Windsor keeping out potentially guys like Langdon and Hunter. Uh, but let me know in the comments if you agree. So usually this part of the video, I, I look at ongoing needs for a club in terms of their list. Um, for me, it's probably just still a key forward. But to be honest, like when you consider they drafted Jacob Van Roy in 2021, Matthew Jefferson 2022, they're experimenting with Petty. Hopefully this question resolves itself. What they may need to consider in, in, by way of drafting is potentially drafting another key position defender with Stephen May towards the back end of his career. And if Harrison Petty is successful as a forward, that means they probably need to um, reinforce that part of the ground, having picked two smalls in the draft in 2023. But other than that, it's probably just consolidating depth. You know, they, they got in Luke Dunson for that reason. You know, if they suffered midfield injuries, they needed someone to come in to be able to play a role. And he doesn't have to be Christian Petrarca, but if he can stabilize that team and make sure there's not too much of a midfield disadvantage if they do have midfield injuries. I don't know if Luke Dunstan was super successful, uh, but maybe Jack Billings is the next iteration of that. Uh, but potentially just drafting more midfield talent because to be honest, the midfield is always going to be an ongoing thing for all clubs. So again, it's not really, I don't really look at that list or team and think there's clear deficiencies there. It's more just like a game style deficiency, if that makes sense. So with all that being said, what is the outlook for 2024 for Melbourne? Uh, I think I will say that in my, I've done like two predictions for next year, one where I did the ladder based on ranking and the other one where I just predicted every game. And I, I, in both cases, I had Melbourne outside the four. But that is not an assessment of their list quality. 
Uh, it was more just based on the fact that there's usually a few roughies every year. And I think I think on list quality, Melbourne, Melbourne's up there with anyone, to be honest. You know, I think the hallmark of this Collingwood side isn't so much individual talent. It certainly is to a degree. But I don't think they have Melbourne necessarily covered in terms of individual talent. It's more their probably their culture for one, but their game style and their commitment to that game style. With Melbourne, there's a little bit more of a breakdown and um, potentially, you know, when you look at their finals performances, uh, it's a mindset thing as well. They lost all four of their last four finals uh, where most of them at the, at the MCG, if I'm not mistaken, too. So that's the thing that's got to click for Melbourne this year. It's between the ears. Uh, I do think they should contend again. That's what I'll say. They should contend again based on this, they should have premiership potential, genuine premiership potential. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, hopefully they have a good injury run. If we get a really good look at, say, Petrarca, Oliver, Viney, and Gorn, for instance, in that midfield, if they play full seasons, then that's that's a long way to getting Melbourne really competitive with the best teams again, in my opinion. But there you go. That's my take on the Ds. They should be thereabouts again. No clear weaknesses. Uh, drafted well over the number of years. Phase players into the team. I don't think there's too much to criticize other than their performances sometimes on the biggest stage. So uh, we'll see what happens. But as always, I welcome your comments and thoughts in the comments section below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next list review. Cheers.